What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to the Grow Podcast. My name is David. With me, as always, is Pastor Leo. We are here to help you take a next step in your relationship with Jesus. We're so glad you're here. Hello, and welcome to episode 113. 113. 113. For those that don't know what I mean when I say 113, this is not one thirteenth episode. Mm-hmm. Is that a chapter verse thing? One thirteen. Yeah, this is not <laughs> grow podcast one thirteen. David one thirteen. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> there will be none of that. Uh, Leo, it's great to have you here as always. All of you, come to everyone. Thank you for being here and joining us on the Grow Podcast. I think we've done ten of these now together. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. no this, this would be eleven with just 11, the two of yes. us, and then so twelve total mm-hmm. with the little preamble that we did with pastor mike that's right which was good yeah it go has. check out the preamble we should have named it that the preamble the i'm gonna preamble. go back and change the name <laughs> just confuse everybody <laughs> uh that was a good episode to learn kind of like some tips on how to read the bible for a bible study that's right not that you know there's anything magical about it just like you know better ways to study mm-hmm. did you how are you at studying Leo. Not really good. That's not your if thing. If we're talking about the thing. Like classic a, sit down and read and well, learn. D- no. I mean, yeah, sure. What worked for you um, or nothing? You've never passed a class <laughs> in your life. Like my parents would, would tell you that um, during my college days, they never saw me holding a notebook or a book at sure. home. That kind of studying. Yeah. Yeah. And they are amazed how I graduated. Oh, you did graduate. Okay, I didn't know where we were headed there. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I wasn't much of a um, studier. I I learned, uh, like, I have a a pretty good memory, and I learned that if I wrote something down, like physically wrote it down, Mm -hmm. it was going to stick with me. So as long as I took, like, if I had, you know, if you have a professor giving a lecture... As long as I took my notes with a you know pen or a pencil on on paper, right. I never I. It's not like I was you know the greatest student of all time, but I I really never needed to look at them again, and I would do well on tests, which was important for me. That's awesome. As I often did not do the non-test assignments. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Some people call them homework. Yeah, it was not my wheelhouse. I no. I like to do the oh me neither. was that due today? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Like, hey. Good thing I got an A on that test last week. Can you do week. my homework? Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> my wife is like the polar opposite. She's like, she was so uh, studi- studious, studious, mm-hmm. whatever. Like if she was like writing papers months in advance and getting all her stuff. Done, that was that was not me. I felt good a couple weeks ago when Hattie preached, Pastor Hattie. And she talked about how she's a procrastinator. And I was oh, like, well, yeah. if it's good enough for Pastor Hattie, it's good enough for me. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not in school anymore. Me too. But uh, it was nice to learn from Pastor Mike the the, the, the tips and tricks mm-hmm. on reading. I think it does help because it that's really how does. I study too. And it, I think it helps a lot for me because, like, because I've been reading the Bible my whole life. I'll often just fall into like a rut where I'm right. not, I don't even know if a rut's the right word, just a kind of a comfort zone where like, okay, I've read this before. So I'm just kind of reading it. Like right. I'm not, I'm not being intentional in any way. And it, going back to that episode, he talks about how, like, that's how you should do it the first time you mm-hmm. read that passage, right? We're going to study these 14 verses, say Romans 6, 1 through 14, just read them, right. just read them, but then go back and be more intentional with them mm-hmm. after that. And that's something that I've had to be intentional about because for me, it's, you know, like, I grew up the son of a pastor. I like I said, I went to a private school um, that was a, a Christian school for a while. Like I just, I've I've been in the Word my whole right. life, so I've read it. I I remember. Not I'm not saying I re- memorized the whole Bible. Or I'm not one of those people. But when I read it, I'm like, oh yeah, this is something I've read before, and it, it, I can really easily just kind of skim. You That's ever, true. You ever skim read, Pastor Leo? It Especially feels, when I'm cramming. It feels bad when you do it with <laughs> right. God's word. You're like, right. I probably should have read a few more of those words in That's there. That's true. Don't That's jump true. to the end. That's true. But uh, but yeah, so go check out that episode. Check out any other episodes you've missed. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, definitely do that. I mm-hmm. think the video podcast is worth going to the YouTube channel for. What about you, Pastor I agree. Leo? Thank you. I agree. appreciate that. YouTube.com slash New Hope here for those mm-hmm. of you... Um, on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, but uh, our all of our episodes go on YouTube. But we also have a bunch of incredible worship, which, with uh, by the time this 
episode goes live, you'll be able to see a couple songs from our night of worship that we did with PH Church, with New Hope Tioga, New Hope Williston. Uh, It was a really cool night. And Mm -hmm. some of the songs from that uh, will already be on the channel. So definitely go check those out. Right. And then subscribe. You were there. I was there. You may even see Pastor Leo in the background of some videos, probably worshiping. That's true. Or bringing tissues to people who are crying. <laughs> that also happened. <laughs> jo- so yep. we, we got home. When I got home that night, Joanna told me, she's like, at one point, Leo just had to like run around and get everybody tissues. <laughs> it's like, good for Leo. <laughs> well, before we dive into Romans, you have brought some Filipino food for me, as always. Yes. Um, sometimes it's scary. Usually it's delicious. Mm-hmm. Today, it includes Ghirardelli sea salt caramel sauce. I don't know where in the Philippines <laughs> this comes from. I'll look on the back here. San Leandro, California. I'm not sure mm-hmm. where that is. That's but I'm excited about right, it because I love caramel. Right around the corner from my house. Oh, the, interesting. This, this. You grew up right next door? <laughs> what, what do you have for us today, Pastor um, Leo? This is called Turon. Who? Turon? Turon. T- say it again. T-U-R-O-N. T-U-R-O-N. Turon. 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 Remember, short you guys like t- Turon. Turon. Yeah, there we go. Nailed it. Turon. It's there perfect. You go. Yeah. Um, okay. It, if I open it, I'll show it to you. It oh. kind of looks like lumpia. Okay. But it's not lumpia. See? It looks exactly like lumpia. Yep. I'm real excited for this. <laughs> uh, Michael's going to be really sad because he's not producing today. Mm-hmm. And Michaela's here with us again, and she's going to get to try this. Yeah. And instead of um, <laughs> instead of meat and vegetables, in sure. it, it has banana and jackfruit. Ooh. Mm-hmm. And right. um, do you drizzle or do you dip? What's the move? Some people drizzle, some people dip. It's actually um, usually oh oh cooked boy. with uh, what do you call this? Uh, caramelized sugar. Like they cook sugar until it becomes caramelized. Michaela, and could then you bring they me a paper towel roll from it over there? Around. That sounds wonderful. Mm-hmm. I- ignore the noise you're hearing of the paper towel <laughs> machine, and you should grab one of these for yourself while you're over here. That's Everybody say true. hi to Michaela. Michaela's been our summer worship intern mm-hmm. and has been awesome. You'll also see her. On in that worship, if you were there, as that she was awesome. leading that worship, is true. Uh, and today she gets to eat. This will be the last podcast she produces for yeah. us, and now she gets to try what it's uh, tu- turon. Turon. It ha- um, it's not like the normal banana that that um, that you buy at the store. It's it's our version of plantain bananas, but okay, we call it saba saba bananas. It's Unlike plantain bananas that you can buy here, that the Saba bananas are a little bit on the sweeter side, but it's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Admittedly, you could deep fry almost anything and cover it in caramel sauce, and I'd probably enjoy it. <laughs> but this is very nice. Michaela, thoughts, feelings, emotions. The salted caramel has a nice touch. I like it. She appreciates mm-hmm. the salted caramel. Is that nor that is that always like part of it? You drizzle yes. it in caramel. Is it always Ghirardelli? Well, not salted caramel. <laughs> Gerdel, no, nothing else. If it's <laughs> anything else, no, it doesn't taste good. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. Like I said, it's uh, it's usually just sugar, and then they cook it until <clears throat> it becomes caramelized, okay. and then they just roll it around all okay. of that. Gotcha. So sometimes it looks like that. Sometimes it has a shell <clears throat> of caramelized sugar. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's also awesome. So well, thank you, Andy, again, or or are these you. Uh, me, okay. kind well, of. Well, thank you. Nothing. Yeah. Not, I've said right. no thanks to Andy this week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just kidding, Andy. Love you. Thank you for all the food. Mm-hmm. She probably taught you how to make it. Yeah. Is this yeah. a pretty common dessert? Oh yeah. In the Philippines? Um, yeah. it's it's one of the street foods that you will find. Oh yeah. Big fan of street foods. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I'm gonna. I will definitely find time to continue eating that. But uh, we should probably jump into Romans, as Why? this is the Grow Podcast, not the <laughs> Grow David's Stomach with Filipino Food Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, although it has become a little bit of both. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, Romans 6, we're starting Romans today. Six. The way we start kind of every single episode, I kind of mm-hmm. ask you just kind of give us the overall points, overall ideas that maybe we should uh, have walked away from while we were reading, or at least wa- should walk away from today when we're done. Right. Well, okay. So, so far, uh, and again, if you haven't uh, gone through the other episodes, go back and uh, watch all of them. Because so far, Paul has been feeding the Romans and us 
a lot Filipino of, food. Filipino food. Yeah. Yeah, he's Filipino, <laughs> half Filipino. Oh, look at that. <laughs> um, a lot of doctrinal stuff. He was talking sure. about sin. He talked about judgment. He talked about justification. <clears throat> he talked about sin coming into the world through Adam. We talked about that last week. And grace as a free gift through Jesus and all of the other fun stuff. And now we're to Romans 6. And I, th- mm-hmm. I think a lot of people, hopefully they didn't skip ahead to Romans 6. But this is one of the big chapters of yes. Romans, right? Like the some of the most well-known verses from Romans, if mm-hmm. not most of the, uh, are coming out of Romans 6. So I think we, right. we've all been looking forward to this one, Leo. No That's pressure. Right. Well, no pressure. <laughs> and it's true because now Paul starts talking about the results of being given a right standing with God. He talks about what that is supposed to look like in the lives of believers here and now. So it's time to apply it. Yes, application time. I'm on board with application Mm -hmm. time. That's right. So (laughs) the Bible makes it clear that while we are to look forward to eternal life, and we are, and Jesus' second coming, and we are, the things that we learn from God's Word should be, ought to be, and must be applied now. You don't just Mm -hmm. do everything that you want and then... When Jesus comes, it's like, yay, now it's time to be a Christian. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. It, uh, it has to be applied uh, now. So they're supposed to change how we live now. Yeah, we and talked, to, I th- was it 111? Yeah. We talked about uh, people that the, the more you sin, mm-hmm. then, then the more God gets to spread his grace. Right. Therefore, we should sin a lot. Right. So we... we <laughs> We've talked a little bit about this, uh, you know, how are we supposed to live now? That was not the right way to do it. If I remember nope. correctly, not we should all. not intentionally sin a whole bunch Right, now. and a lot of people use that as an excuse. Like, how certain are you we shouldn't do that? 10%. Oh, I feel like it should be more than 10%. <laughs> I get to be the sarcastic one. Right. You have to. <laughs> so, well, okay, so here's the thing. God's <clears throat> grace is not a license. Again, it is not a license. For the third time, it is not a license. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> We're going to stress that. <laughs> Smart. It Smart. is not a license for us to do whatever we want. Mm-hmm. Okay? It is not a license. Even our earthly judges do not show mercy to criminals so they can go out and commit more crimes. He doesn't go, oh, okay, I'm going to give you mercy. I'm not going to give you what you should have gotten so go out and sin more Mm -hmm. so no that's that's not how it works a judge that shows mercy meaning reduced sentences or pardons to every criminal is not a merciful judge that's another form Mm -hmm. of corruption i mean think about it right if 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 you have a judge and you know that this judge gives like five days jail to someone who killed someone i mean that doesn't sound merciful at all. Like that right. sounds more like corruption. A judge usually sh- uh, shows mercy to criminals that show genuine repentance. The right, uh, it, it, they they need to start seeing that they see a a criminal and he's remorseful and he's really repent and repentant and he's really sorry for the things that he did. Then that judge has the option to show mercy. So the right response to have been given grace and mercy is a heart of gratitude. It's not to sin more. It's like, woohoo, I can sin more. No, that's <laughs> not how it works. The right response is a heart of gratitude, a heart of thanksgiving, and a heart of repentance. So anyone who claims that saying I am saved by grace equals I am now free to sin, um, unfortunately either misunderstood their new identity in Jesus or more more probably have not really experienced God's grace yeah. yet. Um, you won't know what having a pet you love die is like unless you've experienced having a pet that you really love to die. You you won't know the experience, the pain of 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 losing a pet unless you experience losing a pet. And I remember my daughter, Alondra, um, when when her pet fish died, and it was her very first pet. You just love making the podcast dark. I know, right? Why your daughter's first fish died? Mr. Dark. 
<laughs> I imagine she was devastated. She was devastated. Like, Brutal. Yeah. Like, if you see an emoji with, like, rivers of tears. Yeah. Going That's down based off face. of her losing her mm-hmm. fish. It was her. <laughs> that <Poor> was girl. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and then we had to talk to her about uh, pets. Like, sometimes they come to a point where they just die. Especially if they're goldfish. Mm-hmm. Especially yeah. if they're, it was a uh, it was a beta. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, my bad. I apologize. Right, it I was apologize. a beta, but <clears throat> she was still devastated. I'm sure. And and that's the thing. You won't know it. You won't understand it unless you yourself have experienced it. And so I I personally personal opinion. I personally question the salvation, and the heart of the person who says this, like the. I am saved by God's grace, so now I am free to sin. I, I yeah. question the salvation in the heart of the person who says this. Do, like, do they really know Jesus based on what the Bible says, or do they not? I mean, because it's, you won't know what grace is like until, unless you have experienced it. So do, do you really know the grace that you have been given, or you just believe it, or you just know about it? from the people who have misrepresented it. Yeah. And another thing, I think we talked about in the same episode when we, uh, you know, <clears throat> when we were talking about being saved doesn't give you just <laughs> a license to sin, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but it also, it doesn't, being saved doesn't mean you just won't ever sin. Right. It's not like a, it's not a genie, you know, where, okay, uh, my first wish, I won't sin anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, cool. Like, we're, you know, we... We also don't intentionally try to sin. We, we try not to sin, but when we screw up, we now have assurance that we, we, uh, you talked a lot about it last week. We have Jesus blood covering us. That's right. <clears throat> so while, while we are here, while we are here on earth, we are, and we will always be imperfect. That's speak for yourself, Leo. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Except for me. No, I'm yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> um, it's we are and we will always be imperfect. It is still mm-hmm. and it will always be Jesus' blood and sacrifice on the cross that covers us. That's true. And you, you mentioned it earlier. We do our best not to slip up. But when we do, we and, and here's the thing. We, we slip up not so we can earn or re-earn our salvation unless we willfully throw it away. Unless we, like we talked about last week, like you p- play peekaboo with your salvation, that's 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 a different thing. But when when we unintentionally slip up or when we um, fall into our old habits, it doesn't mean that we uh, we're doing it because we want more grace or because we believe in the fact that more sin equals more grace. We're doing it. We're, we're, we 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 are repentant of our sins, and when we slip up, we are assured that His blood, Jesus' blood, covers our sin, because it's not something that we do intentionally. It's just because of our human nature. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> so, verses three and four, Paul starts talking about baptism, mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, spe- and uh, you know, and then specifically being baptized into Christ. That's right, and into His death. Mm-hmm. Just an aggressive sentence but you know that kind of t- is talking about the symbolism that is involved in baptism but for a lot of people baptism can be uh you know i, th- I think it brings up emotions in a lot of people like for some people it's um if they maybe if i didn't grow up religious it seems like this weird like why is like i don't understand it right. it seems like a weird set for those people that some people that did grow up religious maybe you were baptized as an infant and you're mm-hmm. like well i like I'm, i've already been baptized you know my parents baptized me when i was when i was an infant um it for it just can be a really difficult step for people you know not understanding why it's important it seem might seem extreme it might seem unnecessary that's right um so how you know how should we really view being baptized into Christ well here's the thing and a lot of people uh don't know this unless you really dig um and you go back to the uh original language that that the bible was written in or this letter at least was written in but uh, the Greek word that Paul uses that we translate into the English word baptism is actually used for dyeing clothes. So <laughs> Interesting. Interesting, right? So here's the thing. When we dip clothes in water with the dye, 
and and we 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 let it soak in it. You don't just dip it and then bring it out and it's like, hey, it's a blue shirt. No, you you let it soak. It soaks into the shirt so that it absorbs the color. People who do tie dyes know that, like for a fact. Like you let it soak for a bit. So, like, if if I'm a worse sinner, do I have to be held underneath the water longer by the pastor mm-hmm. in order the greater to greater the sin, the longer the time? <laughs> So, just kidding. <clears throat> oh, okay, <But>, good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, so here's the thing. The properties of that blue dye, mm-hmm. for example, become part of the white fabric that we dipped it in. So the visible identity of the cloth is now transformed. We, now, we no longer see it as white. We don't say, can you, get that, uh, can you get that shirt that was previously white that is now blue? We don't call it that. We just say, can you get me that blue sure. shirt, yeah. right? Um, it's not a formerly white, now it's blue fabric, it's just blue fabric. So we are not losing our religion, as some people say. And I've heard that, especially since we just recently, a few weeks ago, had baptism. Yeah, it was awesome. We were talking, about pe- some, um, we were talking to people about it, and like, eh, it's like we're losing our religion. Or like what you said, mm-hmm. it's, I've been baptized yeah. already, I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, we're not losing... Our religion, and I don't even know what that means or looks like. Seriously, like when you say you're losing your religion, it's like, what does that look like? Mm. Like, what is, I, I don't even know what that means. So when we talk about baptism, we are dipped in the blood of Jesus. So the properties of Jesus soak into us. It becomes a part of us. That is, that is, that is why Galatians 2, 20 says i am not the living now i'm not the one living now it is christ Mm -hmm. living in me i still live in my body but i live by faith in the son of god i am not the one living now i have been soaked jesus's righteousness have been soaked in me it is now him living in me and i brought up uh kind of when i asked that question i brought up infant baptism Mm -hmm. and uh when I remember, I remember my dad was giving a, a sermon on baptism one day. We were having this big baptism celebration, and and he was. In, we had a lot of people that had started coming to to that church from churches where they did infant baptism, whether okay. Lutheran or Catholic. And and my dad grew up Lutheran mm-hmm. and and was baptized as an infant. And a lot of the concerns for a lot of people were, you know, like I, I don't want to, you know, insult my parents. You know, they like they had me baptized. Like, if I go get baptized now, you know, am I being disrespectful to my parents? Am I? And w- the way he put it w- is going to be way more eloquent than how I put it now because he's way better at public speaking than I. Am. <laughs> <laughs> and he probably wrote it and practiced it. But it was something along the lines of, when my parents had me baptized, they were doing the thing they thought was absolutely best for me in, right. the, in the eyes of God. But that's exactly what it was. It was for them. They Mm -hmm. were the ones doing it. That's right. And he said, you know, I had nothing to do with that act of being baptized. And so, you know, for instance, in the, I'm assuming it's all Wesleyan churches. I guess I wouldn't know. I I would know like our church is PH and New Hope, but we we dedicate our our children uh, to the Lord. And and for, you know, for a lot of uh, people who are baptized as children that, you know, that's probably what your parents. You know, maybe, like maybe the church had told them it was it was more than that, but mm-hmm. it's the same thought as a parent, right? It's I, like I want to give my child to God, and, and so maybe at that church it was baptism, but right. it's you know that's why we do dedications because that decision wasn't made by you know, my dad for using my dad as an example again. You know, he was an infant. Mm-hmm. He wasn't like, huh, I'm the most brilliant infant ever, and <laughs> I would like to follow the Lord and be baptized. Like he didn't he didn't come really have a relationship with Jesus until. Uh, like late in his junior year of high school, and then he that's realized, right. like, oh man, like I, like the next thing I'm supposed to do is be baptized, and mm-hmm. and so that that's why we don't do infant baptism. That's right, and <clears throat> the, it ties into what we talked about last week about Jesus's blood covering babies and those who are mentally mm-hmm. not capable of understanding all of this yep. during water baptism, and we talk about this during baptism class too. Bap- the water represents the grave. So when I when uh, when I was put in the water, it represented the burial of the old Leo. Yep. And what came up is the new Leo, the Leo. 
<laughs> Let's not dive no. into your multiple personalities. Right. I don't know. If we don't have that long what of a podcast. Was, was a different creature altogether. <laughs> sure. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, um, in a way it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, what came up is the new me. It's a whole new life. That's why we like that. There's a great celebration that happens um, every time we we had someone go through baptism yep. during the baptism Sunday. What is born of the flesh is flesh. So if you're born again by the Spirit of God, the new, the new life is spiritual life. Just makes sense, right? A spirit in union with God's Spirit. Okay, so we've asked this question before, but I think it ties in well here. You're saying, mm-hmm. you know, I'm born again by the Spirit of God, so like my, my everything is new. Right. So why then do I still have this, like, impossible inability to not sin? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Well, how come baptism isn't like, like the, you know, the farewell tour for sin in my life? And <laughs> like, as soon as I pop up out of there after, you know, thinking like, wow, Leo held me under for a really mm-hmm. long time. Like, uh, <laughs> that wasn't pleasant. Uh, just kidding. We actually don't do that. that I, want, I don't want you ever to be scared of baptism. That's not a thing that will happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but how come when we come out, we're not like, okay, like my old self has been crucified. I'm That's new right. in Christ. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I no longer have that, that desire to sin that, that I can't stop. Well, here's the difference, and, and here's the bottom line. Before we became Christians, we didn't choose to sin. It's not a choice. We just sinned. <laughs> sure, it was our natural right. state of right. being. It was. Yeah. It was just natural. It was. Yep. We are <laughs> sinners. That's it. We. Just, it's like I'm gonna choose to lie today. No, it's. No, <laughs> right. So mm-hmm. we we sin. Period. It's not we didn't choose to sin. It's not we were forced to sin. It's not we were coerced into sin. We sinned. Period. We are sinners. That was our default position. There is no other option. And again, people who say this, usually they think of themselves as just perfect, and then sometimes they sin, and then they become perfect perfect again. But we talked about this a few episodes back. Our default position is we are sinners. There's no other option. Paul took five chapters, imagine, <laughs> five chapters, drilling that truth into us. We are sinners. When sin tries to bring us back, we can overcome sin by pointing to Jesus' victory. We can't be forced into our old mm-hmm. sinful life anymore unless we willingly go. Sure. You know, in other words, as believers, as believers, the umbrella of the grace of God shelters us from the rain of the wrath of the law. Think of rain and then think of you using an umbrella. God didn't take away the rain. God never took away the rain. Just he just gave us an umbrella of his the, the umbrella of his grace so we are sheltered under it. Now sometimes we get wet, sometimes you hold it wrong and then your shoulder gets wet or your hand <laughs> gets wet. But that doesn't mean the umbrella is gone. Mm. It's like, oh, my shoulder is wet. My umbrella is now gone. You don't do that. You just, oh, my shoulder is wet. I'm going to fix it. Yeah. So we don't get <coughs> depressed because some of the rain got our shoulder wet. We just make adjustments so our shoulder doesn't get wet anymore. Mm. So that's the bottom line. <laughs> that's, 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 that's what it's all about. It's, it's, it's still so hard to not sin, but the grace of God covers us the grace of god shelters us from the wrath of the rain uh the rain of the wrath of the law I so think, you know that first <clears throat> thing you said there where you said before we fo- before we were christians before we followed christ <clears throat> we didn't choose to sin mm-hmm. we just we just did like we right. just were that and you know you you go to verse 14 the last verse we were supposed to read for today or or we were going through today mm-hmm. uh for sin will have no dominion over you since yeah. you are not under the law, but under grace. And they, that's that umbrella that you have. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just thinking about like kind of how you put it there, like how that was our default position. And then going to, to Paul's words where like, man, sin had dominion over it ruled mm-hmm. us. It didn't just like, you know, sneak in every once in a while right. and affect us or affect it. It ruled us. And like that's that what was the world many people we lived miss. in. 
yeah. and many people don't think about it. it's like sin has dominion over us mm -hmm. until we until we started <coughs> loving God until we started following Jesus sin had dominion over us mm -hmm. it's not just sin had power sin had dominion yeah it's not like it's not like I just choose to sin it's not like sin sometimes carries me away right no it ruled sin every had aspect dominion. of your life it's yeah like it's an aggressive it's word like, it is yeah. very aggressive yeah. but it's true yeah it is true that's why it's not just we choose to sin it's we sin mm -hmm. period yeah so okay so we talked about this we brought it back here's the head change for for this few verses that we had head change is know that you are free from sin and its power know that you are free from sin and its power because you are now united with jesus in his death and resurrection that is awesome right mm -hmm. and then the here's the heart change feel feel grateful that you have been released from the power and the penalty of sin sometimes we take it lightly it's like Sin has no more power over me. No, sin has no more dominion mm -hmm. over you. Once you see it that way, you feel grateful for it. And here's the life change. Live a life of obedience because you have been raised with Jesus. Okay. So, as always, few questions to wrestle with, brother. Oh, my goodness. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> if you have stopped listening to the Grow Podcast because of Leo's <laughs> Hulk Hogan impression, that's who that is, right? That's Hulk Hogan? Yeah. Brother? Yeah. I wasn't a big wrestling guy. Why? I don't know. I grew up in the 90s. I should have been. All my right. friends were. It just wasn't. Mm -hmm. didn't hit me. But uh, I apologize well, I on behalf macho, of... I can do macho, man. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. That is you. <laughs> we'll dive deeper into Leo's impressions. <laughs> but <next> anyway, <laughs> okay. So questions to wrestle with. Questions to wrestle with. And again, this will be in the notes. Yes, always, right. always in the podcast mm -hmm. notes. All right, always in the podcast notes. Number one, what does it look like in your life to place Jesus at the center so that sin cannot control you anymore? What, will, what, what does that look like for you? Number two, what sins do you need to put to death? Because it's, that one is a personal <clears throat> choice. You can choose to live in it or you can choose to put it to death with the power of the Holy Spirit. So what sins do you need to put to death? Number three, in what ways are you not experiencing the life Jesus offers? And what might be keeping you from experiencing it? And number four, how might your Christian community, New Hope family, mm -hmm. that's you, how might your Christian community help encourage you in your new life in Jesus. Mm. Well, thank you, Pastor Leo. You're welcome. Uh, make sure that you're reading this week because we're gonna we're gonna finish out Romans six, mm -hmm. which ends with the verse you've all been waiting for, Romans yes. six twenty three. We're finally gonna get there, and then we'll probably keep doing Romans after that. There is more after that verse. <laughs> There's more. In interestingly, <laughs> after Romans he 6, didn't stop at Romans six twenty three, mm -hmm. but that is a great verse. It it's, is. It's a well known verse for a reason. I don't. I'm not, true. I'm not teasing it as mm -hmm. in a way that it's silly that it's well known, um, and so I'm I'm excited to get to that. Excited to hear what you have to say. Talk about some wages and mm -hmm. some death. It's mm -hmm. gonna be great. Oh, well, it's gonna be. But more importantly, some <laughs> eternal life after right. that. So make sure you're here for that. Make sure you're putting these things into practice throughout the week. Um, we say it every week. Uh, on the Grow Podcast, but growth always starts with the next step. And our next step may have been to listen to the Grow Podcast, mm -hmm. but now you left here with multiple next steps. That's right. You're welcome, uh, but that's how we grow. And uh, if, if you're not growing, you're dying, I think I heard that's someone true. say once. That's so, awesome. Um, we love you. We're so glad that you were here. Thank you, Pastor Leo. Thanks to all of you, New Hope family, and we will see you next time. Yeah.